I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you three questions on probability and I hope that will help you to review for your exam. Question number one. A fair die is rolled three times. Find the probability that a six will come up exactly once. Question number two. Consider two bags, each containing six balls. Bag A contains two red balls. Bag B has five red balls. A bag is selected by tossing a coin and one ball is removed at random from it. Determine the probability that it will be a red ball. Question number three. A group of 50 students, 24 study chemistry, 30 study physics, and six study neither of these subjects. Determine the probability that a randomly chosen student studies both chemistry and physics, at least one of these chemistry given that he or she studies physics. So I like you to pause the video, copy these questions, answer and then look into my suggestions. I'll also change the question a bit to make them for conditional probability. Let's look into question number one first. A fair die is rolled three times. Find the probability that a six will come up exactly once. So, so there could be three scenarios. Six could occur in the first row or in the second row or in the third row. So what we're trying to say here is that there are three favorable cases we could have six in the first row, we could have six in the second row, we could have six in the third row. So the probability will be combination of all these three. Getting six and not getting others will be, these are independent events, so the probability is one out of six times. Now, what we get here is all other things is five out of six, all numbers but not six and then here also five out of six right so that becomes the probability of getting six in the first row getting six in the second row will again be same okay so not getting six is five out of six one out of six times five out of six and this will be five out of six times five out of six times one out of six so the probability of exactly one will be some of these. So when you add these up, you get your answer, which is the probability. Six will come exactly one. Six comes exactly once. So that be three times. You can now do three times. These are all similar products correct so 1 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 you can always use the calculator to find the answer right so we have we could simplify this uh, before using calculator so we could divide this by 2 and then we get 25 over 36 times 2 72 right so anyway so we get our probability as 25 over 72. So the answer is 25 over 72. Right? Now let's look into the second question. Question number two. Consider two bags, each containing six balls. Bag A contains two red balls and bag B contains five red balls. A bag is selected by tossing a coin and one ball is removed at random from it. So there are two activities. Determine the probability that it will be a red ball. So in this case, the first activity is tossing a coin, right? So first one is toss a coin. And the second one is selecting a ball, right? So removal of ball. So as you can see, both are independent events and they are mutually exclusive. So very important to understand both are independent and mutually ex exclusive. 
So to find the probability, we are going to use the product, correct? Okay. Now when you toss a coin and then select, that means what? So test, tossing a coin, you could select either bag A or bag B. Probability of each is half. Now, if I select one bag, which is, let us say, let's say, let's keep this bag here, the other one there, we have six balls in each, uh, in which the first bag, A, has two red balls. So let's say these are two red balls here. In bag B, we have five red balls. We have five red balls, okay. Now, total are six. The others could be of any color. So let's put some other balls here. So one, two, three. Let me add a different color. Let's say that's the distribution. This is our bag A and that is bag B. Now we're looking for the probability of red. Now selecting red from this set is 2 out of 6. And from here it is 5 out of 6. And therefore, when you combine these two probabilities for red ball, what do you get? You get combination of these two, right? And so the answer is probability of selecting red ball is half times 2 out of 6 plus half times 5 out of 6. Good. So denominator is 12, numerator is 2 plus 5, which is giving us 7 out of 12. Right? So that is how this question can be answered. Now we could always change the question to make it a conditional probability and that is find the probability that the ball comes from bag B when we know that the ball is red. So that becomes a conditional probability. So let this be your question number four. Okay, so, so question number four for you is to find the probability. So when we did all this tossing and all, then what we found is that the ball is red. Now you need to find the probability that the ball comes from bag B, right? So that becomes your test question. And let's move on to the next question, which is question number three. A group of 50 students, 24 study chemistry, 30 study physics, and 6 study neither of these subjects. Determine the probability that a randomly chosen student studies. So there are three different questions here. So what we are going to do is we are going to actually sketch a Venn diagram. We know in our sample space we have total of 50 students they are studying two subjects physics or chemistry or neither of these two right so so this is our sample space in which we have 50 students let's figure out the numbers what we know here is that six study neither of these subjects so six is outside right we know numbers in our sample space is 50. Now, 6 is neither of these. That means that the students, so number of students who are studying chemistry or physics, right? So chemistry or physics should be 50 minus 6, which is 44, correct? So combined is 44. What we know here is that the number of students studying chemistry is 24 and the number of students studying physics is 30. 
right so that number is definitely more than 44 the reason is that is the intersection of these two the common students right which have been counted twice and therefore we can say the number of students which are studying both chemistry and physics will be 44 take away these two right take away these two uh, 24 minus 30 okay so that gives you the total number of students who are studying both these subjects correct so 44 take away 24 is um, uh, I mean I should have done uh, the other way uh, I should add these two and take away 44 right so 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 you get 54 take away 44 let me write down here uh, 54 take away 44 is 10 right so these are 10 students here since total number of students studying chemistry and physics is 10 those who are doing only chemistry only chemistry will be 24 take away 10 which is 14 and only physics will be 20 correct so that gives you all the numbers now it is very simple to answer right now let's answer both chemistry and physics remember when we say both chemistry and physics we are looking for this intersection and there we have 10 and therefore this is 10 out of 50 which is 1 out of 5 correct now the second one here is at least one of these so when we say at least one of these that means uh, we have to take away those which are not taking physics or chemistry so we'll take away six so it is uh, 50 minus 6 divided by 50 which is 44 over 50 or you can say 22 over 25 correct the last question here is the number of stu uh, chosen student studies chemistry given that he or she studies physics so this is the example of conditional probability right so now we're talking about conditional probability that means we are given that we are working in this domain right so let me just highlight it so when you say we are given then it is physics that means this domain then how many chemistry then how many chemistry so in this domain the modified domain which is given to us we have only 13 all correct so we could write this as probability for those who are studying chemistry and we are given that the student is already studying physics correct so that is probability of intersection of chemistry and physics divided by the probability of physics correct that is what it is now from here the probability of intersection is 10 over 50 and that of studying only physics is 30 over 50 and so we do get our solution which is 1 over 3 but see we could also get this solution directly from here so if you consider so alternate method let me write alternate method alternate method that is the sample space now has only these 30 students right 30 who are doing physics and out of these 10 can take chemistry and so we get one out of three so you could also get by using the alternate method and that is the probability of students taking chemistry when we know that this student is already studying physics is 10 out of 30 right so 10 out of 30 which is 1 out of 3 so either way you get the solution 1 out of 3 now in the last example we have purposely taken up conditional probability that is the next unit and uh, in the question before this I modified the question to conditional probability so I like you to answer that question based on the concept which we have learned here in question 3c I hope that helps feel free to write your comments share your views and if you like and subscribe my videos that'd be great thank you and
All the best.